Hi, everyone. Welcome to day five of MBA Spotlight. I cannot believe we're on day five already. Um, I feel like we just started yesterday. Um, I think many of you, most of you know by now, we're doing, um, this is the first virtual MBA fair hosted by GMAT Club, where we have top 20 MBA programs for, from all over the world. And uh, schools are coming in to talk about their programs with their current students, but in the background, we are also doing a lot of admission experts um, hosted to talk about your profiles and weighing in on them. And finally, uh, we also have current students on panels talking about their MBA experiences. So we are already a few minutes late, but, but what's an online thing without a technical glitch? Um, so join me in welcoming Paula and Anita from ESA. Paula, why don't you take it away? Okay, thank you. For well, um, thanks everyone for being here. It's a pleasure. Um, I just wanted to start by quickly introducing myself. Um, so today um, I brought a special guest, um, Anita Sharma. Uh, so she's going to be introducing herself um, after my quick presentation. So I'll try to be as short as I can so you can hear more from her, from her than from me. So I'm the head of um, uh, the MBA admissions at the SA Business School. I'm also a graduate from the program. So I graduated in 2016. I've um, joined uh, the admissions team straight from my graduation. So it's been four years that I've um, that I've been working with TSA. Uh, I was previously uh, based in our Sao Paulo campus covering the Latin American market. And I'm, um, well, I don't know if obviously, but I, I think I'm obviously from Brazil. Um, so I always like to start by mentioning the mission because this is something that the ESA really um, is really loyal and really lives by it. Um, so we were a school that was uh, created with a mission. Um, and this mission is um, to um, create leaders um, that will have a positive and a lasting impact in people, in firms and society because they will um, uh, be responsible and accountable for the decision-making process that they, uh, th that they do. So we have uh, strong values uh, that support this mission, that is professionalism, integrity, and spirit of service. So this spirit of service is um, very present in our daily lives at ESA, which is basically um, uh, translates into a very collaborative uh, culture. Right. So not only um, uh, inside your team, but also um, with the staff, with uh, professor, with um, um, people in the cafeteria, um, alumni. So this is um, uh, a very comprehensive uh, culture that we have uh, throughout the, um, the community. Um, and just um, so I'm going to stick to the very factual um, aspects because I think that Anita can explore a bit more um, the, the more experiential part of our MBA. So yes, um, MBA is a 15 or 19 month uh, program. OK, it's all taught in English, uh, but we do offer business Spanish classes uh, because we think that, uh, well, if you're going to be in Barcelona for two years, it's good that you know some Spanish. So the, the program starts with two weeks of uh, business Spanish programs uh, already in the Barcelona campus. Then in September, from September to June, we have the core courses um, where these are the very MBA and very typical MBA um, uh, subjects. No? So it's finance, marketing, operations, leadership, self-development, um, uh, decision analysis, strategy. Uh, and this is um, uh, these are all mandatory courses. OK, so no matter what you've uh, studied in your life, you're still going to have the same um, um, subjects as everybody else. And I think that this is um, uh, this is especially important because one, we have a very diverse pool of candidates. And the idea is for these uh, different backgrounds and profiles to complement each other. So what I was talking about, the spirit of service in the beginning really comes into play here because we do expect uh, people to support each other. OK, during this first year, we get the 350 students and we split them into five sections of 70. Um, 
And inside the 70, you're going to have a team of nine to 10 people that you're going to meet every day. And this team is assigned by ESA, so we can guarantee diversity in terms of backgrounds, um, in terms of undergrads, in terms of nationality, in terms of GMAT. So we have like a very complex algorithm that runs um, in a way that we can make the, the team the most diverse it can, but also that the teams are equally strong, right? Because there's some sort of um, uh, competition, uh, healthy competition, but competition between um, among teams because uh, academically we, we use the um, force curve. So some people are going to be A, some people are going to be Bs, and some people are going to be Cs. Um, so the idea is for you to meet with this uh, team every single day so you can discuss the cases of the day. So I'm going to, uh, in the next slide, I'm going to talk a bit more about the case method. Uh, but just uh, bear in mind that um, uh, this team is a, it's, uh, your work unit and you will have to work with them um, every day for the final projects, for the case discussions. Um, and it is a very diverse team. So in during summer, if you're going for the 15-month track, you can do electives during the summer. And then um, when you come back, you have one more term, that is a trimester, of more electives. This is where you also have an opportunity to do the overseas modules in either um, Brazil or New York, which is where we have campuses. Um, and you can also choose to go on an exchange. And we have partnership with um, more than 30 business schools around the world. So instead of being in ESA for this last term, you can be somewhere else. And if you're going the 19 months uh, program, um, you can do your summer internship. Uh, so the summer internship can be um, like in any company anywhere in the world. So it doesn't have to be necessarily just in Barcelona. Uh, we have a very strong career center that I'm also going to be talking about. Um, and uh, as an alternative, if you don't want to work um, in a company and you want to explore your entrepreneurship um, uh, potential, we have the um, summer entrepreneurship experience where you stay on campus in a team developing your own or someone else's uh, business idea. OK, so you have a board, you have mentors and people give you feedback. So the idea is to um, have this entrepreneurial experience. Um, and then eventually, if you want to continue with your project in the next, um, uh, until the end of the program, you can. If not, you can uh, close there. And then when you come back, um, you have, uh, again, the electives. And this is also the moment that you're going to be able to tailor your MBA a bit more um, into the um, areas that you are more interested in, so be it uh, finance or entrepreneurship or strategy or marketing or tech. And, and you can also do the overseas modules um, for the 19 month track. Uh, we have an overseas modules that happen in January that, that can be in Nairobi or Shanghai. So the overseas modules, they are basically an opportunity for you to explore the corporate culture of um, uh, different regions in the world. No? So we have Brazil, we have New York, we have Nairobi, and we have Shanghai. So you stay there for two weeks, have intensive classes, and one of the, some of the modules, you also work um, with uh, uh, local companies in the consulting project. And then the case method. Um, we put 80%, but this is always an estimate. I actually like to say that um, we work 100% with the case method. And this means that um, every class that we can deliver through a case discussion will be delivered through a case discussion. OK, so this is um, this bring a very practical um, aspect to the course. Um, also very intense because the case method demands a lot of preparation. But it means that the case is um, a problem that a manager in a specific company in a specific moment in time was facing. And um, you have to put yourself in the shoes of that manager and come up with a solution, right? So you do that on your own. You think about your, your solution. So it was me with my industrial engineer, a former consultant, Brazilian mindset, thinking about um, a problem and a solution. And then I came to my team and it was the Chilean coming from banking or the Polish coming from uh, uh, private equity or the Indian coming from healthcare. 
thinking with a very different um, uh, mindset, right? And this is where the um, experience gets um, even richer, right? And this is um, the link uh, for the next slide uh, for you to really see how diverse the class is, right? So again, um, the class of 2021 was a bit bigger. Uh, it's usually 350, but we split them into the five sections that I already said. 85% of people come from outside of Spain um, and we have more than 50 nationalities in class. So it's really a global program, right? And uh, in the pie, the pie chart, you're going to see how, how much we're split. So um, we do have a reference and I say from the admissions perspective that we do have a reference of the percentage that we want to bring um, from each part of the world, right? Of course, there are areas that we're always trying to increase, so Africa, it can be a big challenge. Um, but we always try to have um, a balance um, among regions so we can have that um, diversity. So the combination of the case method in a very diverse uh, pool of candidates or students, um, it's actually something very unique about the essay, right? Because it's not about learning one way with the, what the professor is saying. And it's not about being sharing the floor with uh, students that are just quiet, um, listening to a professor speak, right? You learn from your peers. And this is also where the collaborative um, culture comes into play. So to just finish before I pass the word to Anita, um, I wanted to quickly mention our career development center which basically has um, a couple of hats, okay? It's the business development uh, hat where we have our career directors reaching out to companies. So they come to campus, so they send us job postings. So um, they have um, um, active presence um, during the job search journey of our students. So there's a lot of networking opportunities that are being generated. We have the hat that is very important, that is career management, which is not only because at um, in, in by essence, we are not a headhunting um, uh, company, right? We, what we really want to do is to prepare you and develop you in terms of your professional, professional skills, right? So this is um, writing a good CV, um, uh, writing a good cover letter, doing a good interview, being good at networking, uh, being good at cold calling, um, uh, reaching out to people, really leveraging your strengths, increasing your self-awareness, increasing your focus. Um, so we take a very, very personalized approach. Our career directors are, um, they do have an open door policy you can schedule as many um, uh, meetings as you want with them. They actually really like that. I think that they like much more the high maintenance students that are reaching out, that are listening, than the people that are just disappear and uh, never reach out and then come in the end of the cycle saying, uh, now I want a job. So it's a really um, um, collaborative process. But at the end, it depends a lot on the students, right? So it will depend on you to get your dream job, right? We're going to give you all the tools, but at the end, it's on you. And then um, that's a good link to the professional clubs, right? Which is a student. Uh, so these are student-driven organizations. We have many that I cannot even list uh, how many professional clubs we have. It's consulting, it's finance, it's responsible business club, it's the women in business club, it's the tech club, it's the private equity club, it's the fintech club. So any, every year we have new clubs um, appearing and they have a very close uh, relationship with the, with the career development center, right? So the clubs, um, it's a good opportunity for you to develop your leadership skills because you will be leading a team and a good exposure to companies, right? Because um, you invite companies to campus uh, for uh, company presentations, for networking drinks, and you organize what we call the career tracks where you go to another country. And that's one of the advantages of being in Europe is that uh, you take a, a, a two hour flight and you're in Berlin or in London or one hour flight or in France. And um, so the fact that we are in Barcelona uh, doesn't isolate from the other parts of the um, of Europe. Right. So it's very it's very easy. So we organize many of these tracks. So we have the healthcare track in Switzerland. We have the London banking track, uh, obviously, in London. We have 
I went to the tech uh, track in um, in London and the startup track in Berlin. And these are all organized by the students, right? So it gives you a good exposure to the, um, uh, to the companies. And this is our team, just to say that, um, so in terms of the level of the associate directors, they are all alumni. And I even have some of my friends that graduated in 2016 with me. So Noel, Ziad, um, uh, Hafa, they are all from 2016. So I think that there is a um, uh, good um, bonding and, and empathy because they've all been in your shoes um, of looking for a job, of being a bit lost, of knowing the type of uh, support that you need. And they are um, organized by sectors, right? So if you go for consulting, Noel is going to be your guy. If you want finance, it's going to be uh, Marcela. If you want healthcare, it's going to be Ziad. Um, but we, we are also distributed in terms and organized in terms of regions. So you can have more than one uh, focal point in our career uh, center. Uh, but if you're looking at um, either coming back to uh, Latin America or going back to the, to the US, uh, you'll have Melissa or you have Mike that you can count on. And they're also doing business development in the region. So this was actually um, a... So just to just to finish, uh, uh, the Career Center is uh, responsible for organizing many on-campus events. Um, the two big of them, uh, one of them, are the career forums that are basically career fairs where we invite 30 to 40 uh, companies to campus so you can network. So there are company presentations. And then at the end, there's a proper fair where you... And have an opportunity to just network uh, with, uh, with with the company's um, representatives, uh, ask questions, uh, exchange business cards. So the um, uh, October uh, the October um, edition, we had these companies. Uh, so they always happen in February and October. And then we have other types of fairs. No, we have the Latam Career Fair. We have the Asia Career Forum, um, and we have other events happening throughout the world. Yeah. So this was all I had uh, from my part. Now I wanted to uh, call Anita. Um, Anita, I'm going to be uh, passing the slides for you. So whenever you say, Paula, please pass, I'll pass. Sounds good. Can you all hear me well? Yes, we can. Thanks, Paula. Uh, so hello, all. Thank you for joining again. Um, I am Anita. I just completed first year at IESE and I'm looking forward for the internship months and second year now. So just to give you, uh, you know, a peek into how we came up with the content, when Paula invited me to speak at this session, she was very clear that the intent is to basically, you know, give uh, you, you aspirants out there a student's voice. And, and, and that made us think what should we really talk about in, in these five minutes from, from a student. Uh, so this content that you see here, we thought would add most value in, in the limited time we have. So I'm going to talk about, you know, most things that most of you might be already thinking about and could relate to. And I'll try to drop, as I talk through, you know, why I chose an MBA, what, what was my application journey like, and then why I chose ESA, I'll try to drop a few learnings and tips along the way uh, and hope it helps uh, some of you. Uh, okay, so I think before everything else, it, it makes sense to just tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, so I am an engineer by training, completed electronics and telecom engineering in India. Uh, I graduated in 2014, uh, after which I joined a healthcare consulting firm where I worked for five years until I was accepted and I decided to join ESA in uh, fall 2019. I was granted a four-day fellowship and scholarship, uh, which of course made the, the decision and, uh, you know, the, the ability to, uh, to take on a big journey as an MBA easier. So in the first year at, at my uh, MBA, I secured an internship and a full-time offer with McKinsey and Company. Uh, thereafter, I ran for elections for a consulting club and I was elected as the president. So that's really a, a, a quick 
synopsis of, of my uh, six or seven years so far. Paula, we can move on. Great. So why MBA? I think I had four major reasons to pursue an MBA. I had a, I had a, a stimulating job, which, which of course was, uh, was fulfilling my quest to learn and grow. But there were clear needs to pursue something uh, larger and beyond. And for me, those goals were first to 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 create or to be a, to be part of a global network of not just students but professors learn throughout my MBA career. But but more importantly, a network that would stand with me until you know many years even after I finish my MBA. Second, I wanted to fill gaps in my otherwise only technical education. As you can guess, I was an engineer with no understanding of finance whatsoever. So I definitely wanted to get a good understanding of the management and business world. Thirdly, I wanted to experience a new geography, but at the same time, a geography which was diverse enough to challenge and, uh, you know, shape my uh, my personality and thinking. And of course, in doing so, I wanted to uh, get access to the jobs and firms of my interest. And lastly, which I think is most important, uh, I want to allow myself some time because I've been working for five years and I really wanted to allow myself some time to see what's out there besides the kind of job I've been doing. So that introspection and some time to discover my interests really led me to an MBA. Moving on, uh, I would like to talk about, you know, my, my MBA journey. And this sounds, I'm sure you guys would relate to this, no matter at what point in the journey you are. Uh, so besides, I think, despite going into my journey, I would rather actually use this time to give you a few tips based on what I learned uh, in this process, because I was in your shoes not long ago. So, of course, this starts this whole this, this long journey starts with the longest, the most tiring step of taking the GMAT. And then you move on to shortlisting schools. Then you move on to another tiring journey. Just when you think that, you know, you've given the GMAT and everything is all is all done. You, you, you realize that writing applications is is tiring and it, it's, it needs conviction. And then if everything goes well, you get interview invites. And if everything goes well, you get that beautiful uh, admit letter. So I've added two tips for each journey here, which I hope uh, benefits some of you. With GMAT, I would say don't fret at all if your score is less than 700. With international schools, with top B schools, there are so many other parts of your application, of your, uh, what to say, a profile in, in easy words that matter much more than a 710 or 730. I have classmates with below 700 scores with amazing internship opportunities at their hands. And those are people, I think those are some of the most uh, talented and uh, capable people. So of course, don't fret about a low GMAT. Secondly, allow yourself some time between you take the GMAT and uh, before you start writing your applications. The reason I say so is because GMAT is draining and you do not want to be tired when you start writing your applications. Give yourself some time for this, for this reason, but also in case you think you want to retake the exam and you have a good chance of improving your score, I think that buffer time always helps. This is something I didn't do. Uh, fortunately, I didn't suffer at the hands of this error but i think it could be a good tip you can always recoup get back some energy and then prepare yourself uh, for committing fully to writing great essays shortlisting schools i think this is so important there are there are there are great schools all around the world but it's important to know what do you want out of your mba and accordingly select the schools you would like to apply to but Going a step further, follow a strategy, create a preference list of schools, and try to distribute those schools across rounds. 
it usually doesn't make sense to apply to too many schools in round one. Believe in yourself and go with maybe a couple of schools in the first rounds and then see how things are turning out and then reapply it round twos, round threes. But I think what helps most is leverage the early rounds for your top schools. Those are good places to not only secure and not only increase your uh, chances of admissions, but it also allows you enough time to get your visa sorted, to understand the culture of the new country you're moving into. Uh, and sometimes also, the, the, I think these rounds increase your chances of, of securing scholarships and otherwise, you know, just, just securing funds from elsewhere. Essays immerse in one application at a time. Don't try to write essays for multiple schools at the same time. It really takes away the focus and it ends up showing up in the material we, we, we submit. Try to know the school values very well. There is more similarity than difference in the top B schools out there. So try to really understand what are the differences. Try visit campus if you can. It will be fun. Definitely come to Barcelona, I would say. Uh, with interviews, I think uh, the big, biggest tip is just be yourself. My uh, my biggest learning in the interview process was that this is not like a job interview. Actually, those were these were much more candid than a job interview. So being yourself helps the interviewer, but also your, your, uh, helps you as well. Uh, we are running short on time, so I'm going to quickly go to the next slide. Why I chose ESA, and I think this is uh, this is probably where I would like to spend a little bit more time. So I did apply to a couple of other schools in Europe because I was I was I was clear that I wanted to study in Europe for the kind of diversity that the continent and the geography offers. So having applied to a couple of schools and uh, fortunately having uh, had the chance to select where to study because I did get other acceptances as well. I think I stood. Uh, uh, it, it, what stood in front of me was the big decision of choosing where to go. The reason I chose ESA, uh, whenever I think back, there are so many reasons that come to my mind, but I think these are the four big reasons. First was definitely the case method teaching. It is so unique. I don't think we can justify this by just explaining to you guys, unless you really sit in a class. The experience of sitting between 70 very different backgrounds and not listening to a professor, but actually making arguments and then listening to somebody else's arguments, it is it is almost transformational. I've had so many moments where I've walked into a classroom with a certain recommendation for a case in my mind, but within 15 minutes of the class, my perception has changed. So that's the beauty, and I think that's the way one learns. And in two years, you do this 700 times. So I think that's amazing amount of learning. The Career Development Center, I think one big outcome of an MBA for anybody is to get the job they want. Uh, so was the case for me. I was in touch with the Career Development Center even before I stepped on campus. And that really helped me. Uh, one is the panic that, yes, I will get the job despite being an Indian, going to Europe for the first time and whatnot. But then when I was on campus and when then there was the interview season, which is really overwhelming. There's there's so many people to support you, to mentor you, to listen to what you have to say sometimes without giving advice. And, and also just make sure that you're well prepared before you sit in front of your uh, of, of your dream job interviewer, so to say. So that that I I would really credit my success to the career development center and the club. Diversity, culture, and values. I, I wouldn't go deeper into this because uh, I think it's it's well just it's 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 well self explanatory. I think people are the best part of ESA experience. And if I were to do an MBA again, I would come back for exactly these three reasons. Then 19 months format was something new to me. I didn't know that a 19 months MBA could exist. Uh, but now I really see that this gives me greater flexibility. We finish, we graduate in May, as opposed to, you know, July or early August uh, for, for a typical two-year MBA program, which gives me good three to four months, which I plan to use for my own venture. You can do, you can just travel around Europe, but it just gives you a greater amount of flexibility. And with the 15 months format, this is, I think, flexibility plus. 
So yeah, that was all. This, these are the reasons I chose ESA. I included a little uh, grade on the right with my first year MBA highlight to just communicate that if you think that there's so much to do in an MBA, you're absolutely right. My one year has flown uh, in, in, in the blink of an eye and there has been so much to do from case to learning Spanish, which I didn't know at all, to preparing for interviews. And now finally, as a president of the consulting club, working with, with Career Development Center extensively in, in you know, helping the incoming class. There is so much, but it is a journey worth taking. Oh, I huh, echo. Um, interesting. I hear a bit of echo. Um, but thank you, Paula. Thank you, Anita, for sharing your experiences. So we have a, uh, as usual, we have a ton of questions. So I'm going to throw some questions at you, but I'm going to try to keep it uh, sort of in sync. So I have some admission question uh, for you, Paula. I have some MBA experiences question for you, Anita. And then, of course, we have some uh, recruiting questions that you both can um, jump on. That sound good? Sounds good. OK, awesome. So starting with admissions first. Um, so you know, there's a lot of different elements in the in the application. And a lot of that uh, Anita went through. And she, she did reinforce on the point that the GMAT or the GRE or the test course, they're not everything. Right, and you have a lot of different elements of the profile. So, Paula, do you want to give us a quick lowdown on what are some of the elements that you should really, really focus on, other than test scores? Yeah. Okay. I think that's always um, a good question to ask um, each school that you're applying to, right? Because the schools will have different priorities. Mm -hmm. Um, at ESA, um, I, I actually like to, to like split this answer in two, right? because from an admissions perspective, um, uh, we have what I like to call the hygienic factors, no? And the hygienic factors, they are basically the, the more hard um, part of your application that you basically, you can't change a lot. So it's going to be your GMAT, it's going to be your um, academic performance, your career progression. So. Um, so that's the, um, the, the part that basically all the top business schools are looking for, no? So I think that everybody's looking for high performers, people that have contributed in their, um, in their company. So this is specifically important to try to show um, through your CV especially, and uh, the contributions and the achievements that you had in each of your positions in each of the companies that you've worked. Um, right. Uh, more than just focusing in your responsibilities, right? I think it's more the results that you brought to the company. But then um, at the essay specifically, there's this other part um, that is the cultural fit. The cultural fit for us is extremely important, right? Mm -hmm. So like we talk about the culture a lot and the mission and the values of the school. And uh, we are looking for people that really identify uh, themselves with this mission and that fit this culture, right? It's a very unique, um, uh, so the case method and all the teamwork and the collaborative environment makes the ESA format and structure very unique. Right. Uh, so we are looking for people that will add to this structure, that will add to these um, dynamics. So, I'm looking for people that uh, are willing to share the knowledge that they bring, that are willing to um, uh, collaborate, to give a hand um, uh, whenever someone is in help, uh, is in need. So I'm looking for, for people that identify themselves with that. Um, and I know that this can be very subjective, and it is. Uh, we, we embrace all the subjectivity of an admission process. Uh, but how we try to mitigate that and th make that um, as uh, fair as it can and as consistent to what we're looking for mm -hmm. is having an admission process that is very close to the candidates. You know? right. So it's not a coincidence that I'm an alumni. So all the associate directors in my team, they're all alumni too. Uh, wow. So we kind of been through the, um, uh, the experience and we know what it is and what it takes to be an ESA student. Um, uh, so we're always in our mind um, trying to ask the question, would I like to have this person in my team, right? right. Um, 
And like we're very high touch. Um, so we have, my team is actually uh, organized by region. So depending on your country of residence, you will have an associate director that is responsible for your region. So make sure to reach out, right? And I think that that's a way to stand out, right? Uh, show commitment, do your research, um, uh, show engagement, because that will help you um, during the process. Awesome. So I have a few more application questions, but uh, I'm going to try to get the MBA experience question as well, and then uh, do an application question with you, Paula, at the end, if you have time. So for you, Anita, you mentioned that you're joining consulting and uh, you're joining consulting in London, right? So, and when you have, uh, when you look at schools in Europe, and that was clearly a for you to, um, to join uh, a school in Europe, you had a couple of options. So what made you pick ESA over other European school? And uh, we're getting comments on the chat about if you wanted to work in London, why wouldn't you choose, you know, schools in the UK? Got it. I, uh, uh, so I've been asked this question. Um, this is not the first time I think I would answer this question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and I, I can understand uh, we're talking about certain specific schools in the UK, and I can clarify. I I didn't apply to uh, to those schools. I think for the same reasons that I that I stated earlier in in, in the last slide, I was very con very convinced by the time I had ESA uh, offer letter hmm. from round one that I do not want to apply to more schools. I I really think I think of course this is a personal feeling. I didn't see enough difference to go through the process again when I had uh, an offer with a scholarship from my dream school. Yeah. The reason I yeah. went, you know, based in being based in Barcelona would not impact my consulting chances uh, in the London versus actually being based in London was just by the track record of ESA's recruitment. Uh, I went through the recruitment reports so many times from the last year, from the last three years, talked to CDC, yeah. and I was I, I, I saw the numbers. One third of the batch uh, goes into consulting, mm -hmm. and a big chunk, 27, I think about 30%, lands in the UK. So I was confident that I can make it even, uh, even from, from Barcelona and at a campus, uh, in a school which which I personally relate to more when it comes to values and and culture. Awesome. Um, no, thank you for sharing. Uh, I can share my voice. Uh, that's okay. um, so, question for you, Anita, uh, like a quick follow up. Um, so, when you were, you mentioned that you definitely um, did a ton of. Uh, shouldering with the career so can you give us a few examples of how did this specifically help you to get your job or also experiences from your fellow classmates on how does the career development center help you in the jobs that you came here to get? sure okay so I think I will actually just extend my answer beyond uh, Career Development Center to also just highlight other resources uh, that, that are present on, on the campus. I'm going to talk about how CDC or Career Development Center and the consulting club helped me or equipped me get the job I wanted. I think it really starts with, like I said, before I stepped on campus, I was in touch with my, uh, through my uh, admissions regional coordinator, I was put in touch with the associate director of consulting for right. for example i think right. well would be this guy it was will fawson back then some other some other person so i was speaking with will and i on the very first call he he he, he directly asked me what do you want out of your mba and i was like okay so these are the this i want to be in consulting these are the companies i'm looking at and then this is my plan b and he said don't worry about your plan b's we can we can achieve your plan a so he was like okay this is this is what these companies look for. He was very objective. This is what these companies look for. You've got this, 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 and these are the few gaps. Let's see how we can cover those gaps in the next seven months leading up to your interviews. So I think that objectivity right from the beginning, even before you step foot on campus, helps a lot. Also, like 
first in setting the expectation of how difficult or easy is this going to be and second then you're more focused on what then everything you do from that day on is basically just as i said just filling those gaps so in my case it was basically i've never worked outside india so how do i bring out aspects of my work experience which highlight managing international teams maybe based in india but then i was managing international teams so that's exactly what i did when i was writing cover letters to mckinsey for example and that helped me fill those gaps so to say in my profile and and of course I get the job the second part is the club which basically in support with cdc prepares you for the core skills for those interviews which is basically how do you uh, how do you present yourself to the interviewers how do you answer questions correctly or in in the best way possible how do you tackle a case interview so the fundamentals of the core things of or of those interviews are are brought out and students are prepared for it for months so by the time you sit in an interview you're confident got it no thank you so much for sharing these are uh, strong valid examples um okay so paula we are absolutely out of time um so i did want to get one question out and i think the answer is going to be uh, pretty pretty quick so we're getting a comment about whether it's um okay to support Real Madrid in the ISA campus. Um, <laughs> just making sure we have the okay. But other than that, thank you so much for joining. Uh, it, it was a great session, Anita. Your MBA experiences definitely helped bring uh, the whole uh, student journey alive. And Paula, thank you so much for sharing all the admission questions and patiently answering them. Um, so you so yeah. So we are sort of out of time, but I'll let you have the last word. So go for it, Paula. Well, well, um, I'd just like to thanks for the opportunity of being here. Um, and just as the last tip uh, that I wanted to give to um, in stress, because this is something that I've, I've mentioned and Anita also mentioned, how important it is to be close to the schools that you really um, is interest that you're really interested in. No? So feel free to reach out. Uh, we have our contacts in our website. Um, we have an option to do the feedback on your profile. So if you're um, insecure or if you're, you would fit uh, in the school or not, you can submit your CV or your LinkedIn and we can, like someone from my team, will get back to you. And then from there, you can start your conversation. And so remember to spend time doing that short list and engaging with the school and good luck. Awesome. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Anita. Thanks, Ovik.